Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we're going to talk about getting started on a new Slaves to Darkness army in Age of Sigmar 4th edition. Now, I'm recording this uh, before the new Battle Tome drops, and I am, in general, going to be giving you advice based on uh, general uh, trends in the army over time and sort of like a broad look at what it historically has been like and what it currently is like and uh, what you might want to be picking up to get started. All right, so some strengths and weaknesses of the army kind of overall, uh, just to kind of get a picture if this is going to be the right army for you. This is probably the most iconic army in the fantasy side of Warhammer, whether it be Warhammer Fantasy Battles, the Old World, or Age of Sigmar. The Chaos Warrior has long been like the silhouette of the fantasy side of things. It is a very quote-unquote fair Warhammer army. It's not doing a lot of crazy tricks or anything like that. They move, they hit you hard, and they take a punch back. Um, they're great models. They are at absolutely top-tier, beautiful models. They are metal as hell. They are very cool-looking. They are intimidating, they are dynamic and beautiful. I have nothing bad to say. Most of this line, in fact, has been relatively recently refreshed in one way or another. Uh, there's very few models that are more than a couple of years old in the entire line. Um, so they're all really good in general. Um, as I said, you know, strong offensive army, strong defensive army in terms of like armor. Um, you know, very kind of like basic. They move forward. They beat on you. They take a punch back. It's just what they do. Um, generally speaking, it's a relatively low model count army, maybe to kind of like a mid to low model count, I would say, depending on the exact build that you're going with. Uh, the very elite builds, I mean, you can put 15 models on the table and be done. Uh, because this is such a popular army, over the history of the game there are tons of models available as we'll see in a minute there's just been a ton of uh army boxes and like discounted group uh bundle boxes that have been out for this army in the last few years so uh it, there's just so much out there that you can grab and even older things are really still have uh pretty high availability on ebay and in stores uh some weaknesses for this uh Painting these can be a little bit of a challenge because they are such detailed, beautiful models. Uh, chaos trim, for many of us, has just been the death of us. This is like my third time working on a Slaves to Darkness army. Um, so it's, the trim hurts, but it makes it look so good. Um, there's no shooting, really, in this army to speak of. Um, there's kind of incidental stuff that can have some range attacks, but it's not a, a strategy by any means. So if you're really looking for something that's a shooting army that has some strong shooting, this is really not where you're looking. Um, also not terribly strong in magic or uh, in prayers, anything like that. Um, you're really meat and potatoes, uh, you know, troops in this army. There's definitely some units that are traps in this army, some war scrolls that are traps. Um, and what I mean by that is things that look cool, things that, you know, even their war scroll on paper look cool, but, you know, historically have not been great. They look a lot better on paper than they actually are. And uh, there kind of always are those units in this army in particular. It's a bigger, um, it, it's a big model range. So when anytime that happens there's going to be things in there that are just kind of duds rules wise and there's some things that just seem to be duds forever and they never quite get the rules right of them so uh beware of that make sure you uh try before you buy study things talk to other people about things um also beware of discontinued units for this army um there have been a lot of Warcry Warbands that were released earlier on in Age of Sigmar that have since been discontinued. The models are really cool. You could still use them as things like Marauders, but they are um, they're discontinued. Uh, also, there's a lot of older 
sculpts of models floating around, including in boxes that you can still probably pick up. Um, so be aware that you might be getting something cheap, but it's an old version of a model. It's not the most recent thing. So let's jump into uh, actually, you know, efficiently starting this army. Right now, we have a spearhead available for the army that's going to get you a Chaos Lord on foot, uh, 10 warriors, 10 knights, and a chariot. You know, this is all pretty solid staple stuff for the army. Um, is it super competitive stuff? Not necessarily, but it's going to get you stuff on the table that is relatively strong. Um, the chariot, I think, is the only kind of dud in here. The chariots in this game in general, they kind of never figured out how to do them well. Uh, the other box that you can pretty easily get your hands on is uh, the previous battle force, the War Horde of Eternus. This is a fantastic box. You get your warriors, your knights, your chosen, which are one of the best war scrolls in the army, and a unit of Theradons, as well as Eternus, who can also just be built as a Chaos Warrior, or I'm sorry, Chaos Lord on a horse. Um, in addition, another box you can probably get your hands on pretty easily right now is the Dark Oath box that was uh, some Marauders, uh, Fell Riders, a, uh, one of the uh, Dark Oath heroes on a horse, the Wilder Fiend, um, you know, just all of your really basic um staple troops if you want to go to the more like maraudery kind of side of the army in general those have not been that strong historically not really that great right now although in the uh current rules uh, there probably is a build in there if you like to go that route um i just haven't seen anybody really do it yet or try and make it work then we've got the launch box for the most recent battle tome we had for third edition, you may still be able to get that out there. The word of caution I'll have on this is that this has the third edition book, the third edition cards and more scroll cards, all of everything to do with that. And you're paying for that in the price of this box. And none of that is useful anymore, unless you want to play third edition, but I don't think there's really anybody doing that. As far as troops in the box, you get some Theradons, a Demon Prince, and some Chosen. It's not a bad selection of units, but you're probably going to be paying too much for this box if all you're interested in is the models. All right, and then in the uh, Dawnbringers series, we had uh, a Braxius Varen Spear. Like, this is another great box. Unfortunately, you're probably only going to want to buy one of these. Um, as opposed to like the War Horde of Eternus that I bought three of, <laughs> you know, I just have a ton of that. I think I also bought one of the spearheads and I, I bought basically everything that you see here uh, on the screen at some point or another. Um, but this box has a Braxia and a unit of Varengard in it. The Varengard are not just one of the best War Scrolls in the army. It's one of the best War Scrolls in the game, period. If you can pick up a Braxius Varen Spear, um, this is a fantastic box to grab, and you know definitely want to grab uh, more Varen Guard if you can. Great box, I love it. I bought one. I'd recommend other people buy one. A Braxia though, she is unique, and there is no generic version of her. So you're really only going to want to pick up one of these boxes, or if you pick up more, then you're going to have to figure out how to get rid of that Abraxia, or unless you just want to paint more than one. Uh, but you're only going to ever be able to get one on the table. All right. Now, going backwards further in time, we have the more recent Slaves to Darkness start collecting. This was the first set of re-sculpted models. It was just warriors and knights and a Chaos Lord on Karkadrak. All of those things are good. Um, the Warriors, in general, are a little bit less powerful, but are definitely, for a new player, perfectly solid, serviceable units that are really going to get you there. Um, going now into the old, oldest boxes that we have that you might be able to get your hands on. The 
original Slaves to Darkness start collecting from, I believe, second edition, as well as the uh, Battle Force from second edition. These are all the old sculpts of these models. So the, uh, the start collecting is almost the same as the current spearhead, except the hero is different. But it's all the old warriors and the old knights. The sorcerer and the chariot are still the same model. Because this is older, it's possible you might get it for cheaper because it's the less desirable models. And if all you care is getting into the game inexpensively, getting into the uh, army inexpensively, and they're still nice looking models. They're not like derpy and bad. Um, same thing with the uh, Battle Force box. You're getting a the Manticore and the Chaos War Shrine, as well as a chariot in there and some knights and some warriors. You know, it, it's staples of the army in general. The Manticore, the War Shrine, and the chariot, those are all still the current models in this army. All of those are terrible. Like, they're terrible sculpts. I really wish they would give us new ones or just put them in the bin. But, um, you know, they're, um, they've all been on and off good in the army, depending on the current book. So, uh, buyer beware. Um, it might not be that great. It might be the things that you want. But really kind of like left to right is the ease of picking these up. Um, you know, I really wouldn't re recommend that uh, third edition starter box unless you just want the old book for collector value or if you're playing third edition. War Horde of, of Eternus, that's like a multi-buy. Um, Chosen are fantastic. Um, the current spearhead... I'm not too excited about, but it's not bad by any means. Um, Braxia's Varen Spear, if you can get that, get it. It's great. Um, so overall, what you're going to see is very common across this is lots of knights, lots of warriors over and over again. Um, you know, they are the quintessential Slaves to Darkness units. Um, the other thing that I would add in here as well is the uh, Old World Warriors of Chaos box is a pretty good deal for the models that are in there. However, those are also all the old sculpts. We're talking about um, Old World. So this is re-released old models that are now on the shelf right alongside the newly sculpted models that are effectively the same army. I don't really understand why they did that, but they did that. Um, so again, if you don't care about what sculpt your warriors and your knights and all of that are, pick that up. It's a cheap way to get into the army. I should have added that picture in here, but I did not. Um, you know, in general, like your battle forces are going to be a good value. That Dark Oath box is good if you like the stuff that's in it. Did I buy two of them? Yes. Did I end up changing my mind and reselling most of what was in there? Also, yes. So. Uh, the Ver Abraxia, though, great. I think that's also still currently the only way to get Abraxia is that box. Um, and she's really good. And one of the best models uh, in this army, maybe in the whole game. Uh, I really love her. She's fantastic. All right, so your pickups after, you know, you get those initial boxes. Uh, your Nexus Chaotica that is your terrain piece you know you get it for free in your list it's a staple go pick it up it's pretty decent in what it does um you know again you get it for free by playing this army uh chaos chosen very very good unit and have basically always been good i think always will be good they're an iconic unit that they don't want to screw up uh baron guard again one of the best units in the entire game Definitely pick up some Varengard if you did not get uh, the Abraxia box. Even if you did, buy more Varengard. They're fantastic. Um, Bellacor. Bellacor has always been awesome, and he's going to continue to be awesome. He can be a little unfun for your opponent, 
because of some of the abilities he has, but he's really good. He's a really cool model. He's hard to say no to. Um, one of the ones that's hard to get your hands on is the uh, Warcry Chaotic Beasts box. Um, Furies that are in that box are currently absolutely fantastic staple units. If you can get your hands on this box, do it. And then the um, the other guys in that box also pretty solid so you uh are really not going to go wrong with those although you don't want to really necessarily put both in the same list um and then your gaunt summoner definitely you know if you want a strong caster he's your go-to in this uh army uh you know double caster uh the one on foot is not super expensive you can also run the one on disc i just threw the picture of the the cheaper one here but, you know, this is the basics for your army. Your Chosen, your Varen Guard, your Big Guy Bellacore, your, uh, your Furies that are uh, a staple prospector sort of unit, and, you know, having a solid wizard to back you up. So that's going to be about it for now, guys. Hopefully this has been helpful for you if you're looking to get a new Slaves to Darkness army started. Uh, that's going to be it for now. I thank you, and I'll talk to you all later.